jig to put a bevel around this guitar, which I alluded to at the end of my last video, where I showed you this jig and test piece that I had made. The last video being putting cavities in this guitar for weight relief. I did get a question after that video about, did I consider filling the cavities with something before I put the maple on top of it? And did it make it sound different? Well, if you tap on this, you can kind of tell where the cavities are, but it's not very obvious and I decided not to fill the cavities. In the last video, I didn't show gluing the book match top on here. But what I did was pin this first half on, clamped it, then put glue on the other half, put the other half on, wax paper, clamps to push these two halves together and clamp the top after putting the uh, template on it. As you watch the video that I shot, you'll see me keep referring to this as a template. Well, it's actually a jig. So toward the end of the video, I think I do call it the right thing, a jig, not a template. So let us build that jig to get that control bevel around the edge of this. I've got this Music Man bass, and we'll see what kind of degree bevel it has on it. I'd say 60 degrees. So this is a 60 degree bevel on this Music Man bass. And as you can see, it starts out narrow and gets wider as it comes around the guitar. And then it comes back off of the guitar right near the neck. So here I've got a 60 degree bit in the router table. This one I only paid $25 for. I saw them for $125, but I thought I'd try this one. So here I've made a test piece that's just like the guitar body. Mahogany, a little stripe of walnut, and the maple top. And I've made a template to go over it. Because what I'm going to try to do is use a 60 degree beveler and do something similar to what's on an SG guitar. Let's see if it'll work. If it works on this, I'm going to do it on the guitar. I've lowered the bit down so I only do about half of a cut of the time. And I got a removable section on here. So now I'm going to take off the removable part and raise up the bearing so it rides on this template again. Okay, here's what we've got on the first test piece. This end's been sanded a little bit, round over. This end is still squared off. You can see the wood got burned a little bit. This is a whole inch held away from this edge. In the future, it won't go a whole inch out. I'll let it get a little bit of that edge. How about a 3 16 round over? So if you see what the template is doing here, the bearing rides on this outside edge and it's getting farther away from the workpiece as it comes out, causing this to become narrower and then back wider again. I've taken the template and attached it to a piece of MDF and I've traced all around it. I'm gonna make this template so I can get a controlled bevel. Here, I want it to bevel in as far as it can go, which would be about an inch in. But as it goes across here, I want it to come out farther and farther. And right about here, there's gonna be a jack go through and meet this chamber. So I need to leave enough space there for a, 
I think it's a three quarter inch hole right about here. So I'm gonna measure out, and I'm gonna come out seven eighths. Almost no bevel at all right here, and full bevel here on out. Right up here where the neck joins, I want this taper, so it'll be in here, but as it comes around this corner here, I want it to go away. So now that I've got the main template marked out on here, and I've made some measurements, I want to taper. So I'm gonna take the original body, draw a line on here out to where I want that taper to come to. Then I'm gonna bring it back in over here. So that's what I'm shooting for around this guitar body. So I've got the template shaped how I want it, but this still needs some kind of an overhang for the bearing to ride on. So here I've made the blocks for the router to ride on that will fill in these areas. After I get them attached, they will need to be routed along the edge. The jig's been sitting all night with the clamps on it. I put reinforcement into the parts where the wood is real thin and you can't put any attachment other than just the glue. We'll see how it holds up. Here's the body placed into the jig. Make sure it still fits. You can see the parts that I made that guide the bearing are sticking out past this jig. So I need to trim this off with the router and it's gonna get real thin down on this one end so hopefully it holds up. This thin part was starting to vibrate so I put the templates back in here and put a little piece of paper to wedge that to keep it tight. Check it out, it's thin, but it turned out okay. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. It did get too thin right here, but I realized that I had the grain of this going the wrong way. If I came in this way, probably would have held up better. So here's where the broken out chip piece was. I cut it off square, made a little wedge of wood, and taped it on with that Tyvek style tape. I found it to be able to stick to wood pretty easy. So right in this area right here where it was too thin to run through a router or attach, I've made a little wedge and I'll tape it on just like I did the other one. So I believe I got the jig ready to go. I have all these little patches put in. I've got four holes drilled in here that are threaded so that a bolt can run through here to adjust this for height. I've got a piece of thin wood that when I run the bolts in will not mar the back of the guitar. And let's put the guitar in here and let's try it out. Here's the 60 degree beveler in the router. Uh, I've got it set to where it's gonna take off the full amount. What I'm gonna do though is lower it down and only take off part of the time so, you know, that it doesn't grab the wood and chip it out or something. So I'll lower this down to where it rides on this jig that I made. Let's take a look at the first pass. I think it's doing exactly what the plan was.
So instead of having removable parts on the bottom of this jig, I've got these screws. I'm gonna adjust and raise the whole thing up to get it to the height I need. Looking good. Overall, I'd say this turned out pretty great. We'll do a little filing, sanding, and I think it'll be perfect. So here's the first guitar after some sanding. The burnt part sanded off. And here we go. The second guitar is in the jig ready to go. I've added these nuts jam locked together and they're set so that when you adjust these screws, it raises the jig up the right amount for the next pass. And right there will be the height of your finished pass. So here we've got this guitar beveled, this guitar in the jig ready to be beveled. So we're getting closer and closer to having these done. What's next? Put the neck pocket in here for this guitar neck. Once we have the neck pocket in here, then we'll put the template on for the, the bridge component holes and the pickup cavities. So be sure to subscribe and follow along and see these things get finished. See you next time. Marvelous.